We're interrupting normal programming to join the BBC News Desk for some breaking news. Welcome to the BBC News Desk. We bring you breaking news of a serious incident between Russian and NATO warships off the coast of Turkey. Although the details are uncertain, early reports indicate that Russian fighter jets were fired upon by naval vessels of the Turkish military who are part of NATO forces operating in that region. It is unclear at this stage whether these jets were shot down or not. This incident comes in the wake of a similar event some months ago in which two Russian pilots were killed after being shut down by Turkish surface-to-air missiles after the Russian jets apparently strayed into Turkish airspace. It is not known what caused this latest incident or at exactly what time the conflict took place, but it is believed that it happened earlier today and that Russian forces may have returned fire. The government has convened a meeting of the Emergency Cobra Committee and senior members of the British military have been seen entering 10 Downing Street. There were chaotic scenes earlier today as the Prime Minister was rushed back to Downing Street as details of the international crisis began to emerge. He had been due to attend a meeting with senior business leaders in the city today, followed by a cross-party governmental committee meeting on electoral reform, but these plans have been cancelled in light of current developments. The government spokesperson said that no statement will be issued until the situation becomes clear. There are unconfirmed reports that Russian forces have retaliated by engaging in direct fire against several NATO warships. Two US cruisers, the USS Princeton and the USS Gettysburg, are reported to be in the region, but it is not known if they were directly involved in the incident. The Ministry of Defence has yet to confirm these reports, stating that the situation is changing rapidly and that they would be making a formal statement in due course, but acknowledging that something very serious has happened. In Europe, senior military leaders have been meeting at regional NATO headquarters, indicating that a response to what they describe as unwarranted Russian aggression is being planned. A general military alert has been issued across Europe, including the deployment of over 50,000 NATO troops to key points along the central border to Russia and the activation of over 200,000 reserve troops from France, Germany, Holland and the UK. The first contingent of British troops has already left RAF Bryce Norton. All military leave has been cancelled and the mobilisation of all British forces nationally and internationally has been ordered by the government. And we're just receiving reports that at least two US warships have sustained serious damage as a result of direct fire from Russian forces. Details are unclear and the number of casualties remains unknown, but it is reported that at least one vessel has been sunk with major loss of life and that contact has been lost with the further two ships in the area. The US president has condemned the Russian military action, calling on President Putin to pull back from what he described as a reckless and warlike posture that can only lead to greater conflict. He said that he holds the Russian president solely responsible for the loss of US vessels and the deaths of US military personnel. World leaders have expressed their condemnation of Russian military action, stating their support for US and NATO forces and their hope that a peaceful negotiated settlement to the conflict can be achieved. The Pentagon has convened a meeting of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and a worldwide military alert has been declared for all US forces with immediate effect. We'll be bringing you further information on the US response to the situation as details emerge. The conflict off the coast of Turkey and Syria continues to escalate with reports that a number of Royal Navy vessels have joined the battle. It is believed that the HMS Lancaster and HMS Duncan are leading the British response and that the HMS Northumberland is en route to provide additional support. The Royal Navy Trafalgar class submarine HMS Torbay is believed to be in the region, but it is not clear whether it is involved in the conflict. The Ministry of Defence has declined to comment, stating that the military response to the situation would be proportionate, but that it would not be appropriate to discuss any details thereafter. Several destroyers from the Russian Black Sea fleet have been spotted in the Aegean Sea, indicating a potential major escalation in the scale of the conflict and increasing fears that the fighting may get out of hand before a political solution can be negotiated. In response to global condemnation of Russian military action, President Putin has stated that Russia will use whatever means are necessary to defend itself, including the use of its strategic military capabilities. Russian forces are already at a heightened state of combat readiness, following significant military exercises over recent months 
and the deployment of the S-400 advanced surface-to-air missile system along the Turkish border and in eastern Ukraine. News of the outbreak of military action between Russia and NATO has been greeted across the globe with expressions of concern and alarm. Reporting restrictions have been imposed due to the sensitivity of divulging troop movements, but we are hoping for an update from our local reporters in the region and from other news networks in due course. In the UK, the mobilisation of the armed forces is continuing, with a full recall of all reserve forces and heightened security at military bases and airfields. Typhoon fighter jets from 29 Squadron at RAF Coningsby in Lincolnshire and 6 Squadron at RAF Lossiemouth in Scotland have begun patrolling UK airspace and restrictions on civilian and commercial air traffic have been imposed around military and nuclear power facilities. The Ministry of Defence has ordered the dispersal of key military forces and strategic bomber aircraft to various bases across the country and the British submarine fleet has left the naval bases at Faslin in Scotland and from Portsmouth on the south coast. Traffic restrictions have been reported on certain motorways and access points, causing tailbacks in many areas and bringing traffic to a virtual standstill on parts of the M25. Emergency services and hospitals in the UK have also been placed on high alert. A senior spokesperson for the NHS has stated that it is important that the UK is prepared for any eventuality, but that this should not be a cause of undue alarm or concern. And just to recap on the main points so far, a serious incident has been reported between Russian and NATO military forces off the coast of Syria, apparently resulting in direct fire from Russian warships against US and British naval forces, resulting in the loss of at least one naval vessel and with casualties now exceeding over 200 troops killed and several hundred more either injured or unaccounted for. It is not clear when the first incident took place, but it appears that some time earlier today, Russian jets were fired upon by the Turkish military after apparently entering their sovereign airspace. It is not known whether any Russian jets were shot down, and the Russian government is so far neither confirmed nor denied that this incident took place. A full-scale military response is underway involving combined US and British forces, although the scale and severity of the conflict remains unclear. We are expecting a statement shortly from the British government following an emergency meeting of the Cabinet in a joint session with senior military leaders. It is clear, however, that the situation is extremely serious and is continuing to escalate. Downing Street has confirmed that all parliamentary sessions have been suspended for today and that heightened security measures have been put in place around major governmental and military facilities. Reporting restrictions have also been imposed on all major news networks, reflecting what the government described as a sensitive and volatile situation which represents a substantial and immediate threat to our national security. And in breaking news, Buckingham Palace has announced that the Queen and senior members of the royal family have been evacuated to a secure location outside London. No details have been given and it is not clear when exactly the evacuation took place, but sources indicate that the decision was based on advice from the Defence Secretary. The Queen is apparently fully aware of the ongoing situation and is being kept informed of developments as they occur. Buckingham Palace has said that they will not be issuing a formal statement beyond this announcement, but that they urged people to remain calm and to monitor the situation closely. And with the latest report from the conflict, it is believed that the Russian heavy cruiser Kirov has been hit by a missile fired from the British naval fleet, apparently sustaining major damage with many casualties. Heavy fires on board have been reported as NATO forces continue to retaliate. Russian search and rescue vessels are on the scene with additional support en route from the Black Sea Fleet, who are expected to arrive in the region shortly. And we do now have footage of the conflict from the region. This is the scene of Russian warships based directly off the coast of Syria. These are truly extraordinary scenes. Russian warships firing directly at US and British forces from NATO in what now must surely represent a state of war. We expect to go to Downing Street shortly for a statement from the government about the escalating crisis and how British and international forces plan to respond to the situation. The royal family have already been evacuated from London 
and we now understand that senior members of Cabinet have also been relocated to secure locations away from major centres of population and industry. And we've just heard that the government has passed the Emergency Powers Act, bringing the country into a formal state of war preparation and suspending many peacetime activities and functions. Central government in the UK has been suspended, and power has now been passed instead to a series of local officials dispersed across the country. Emergency response and civil defence authorities have been placed on the highest level of alert and preparations are underway in case the UK itself comes under direct attack. We go now to our senior military correspondent, retired Army General and head of British Armed Forces, Sir Norman Fairchild, who has been closely monitoring the situation. Thank you for joining us. Firstly, can you give us your assessment of the situation and where you think things might go from here? Well, this is clearly a very serious situation, but when I have to say that might have been foreseen, it has been clear for some time that there's been a more fundamental tension between Russia and the West regarding the encroachment of NATO forces and defense systems upon the Russian border and historical territory, so this possibly has been coming for some time. The conflict in the Ukraine and in Syria has significantly increased the likelihood from the various forces would come into direct conflict at some stage, and this is certainly something that many people feared might happen. And based on the reports you've seen so far, can you tell us about the Russian military mindset and what the next stage of this conflict might look like? Well, I think we need to bear in mind that Russian forces have been building their military strength for a number of years, investing heavily in advanced technology and having a level of war readiness that few countries could claim. We have seen several large-scale military exercises by Russian forces, which of course is a convenient way of disguising the deployment and positioning of its military assets. And they of course know that Western forces are already fully committed in various conflicts in the Middle East. I have to say that I'm not convinced that this particular episode off the coast of Syria, as serious as it is in itself, is the full picture. I believe that this is part of something much bigger, and is more likely, in fact, to be a diversion from Russia's true military intent, which remains to be seen. As it is, NATO forces are doing their best to respond militarily to the situation, but they know that they are substantially outgunned and that Russia can impose its will in any way it wants, with little chance of our forces being able to contain them. So is this possibly something that Russia has been planning for? We've all seen the way that Russia has been testing UK response times by sending its long-range bombers close to British airspace, and Russian intelligence has been very active in assessing NATO's ability to respond to a more strategic attack. So my concern is that this crisis is not simply something that has happened spontaneously, but might in fact be either part of something more premeditated or a very effective diversion to tie up NATO forces that are already overstretched. We have to bear in mind that if this is part of a wider first strike scenario by Russia, then they have very little to lose by escalating quickly apart from the substantially superior firepower that Russian forces possess relative to NATO, it's their willpower that we should fear the most. They will be prepared to fully commit to this conflict, and remember that Russian forces are likely to use tactical nuclear weapons at a very early stage in any conflict, as they see this as much less of a threshold or escalating factor than we would. I have to say that it worries me what this might lead to. We've seen that the government has passed the Emergency Powers Act. Most people will be unfamiliar with what this means. So can you tell us what the significance of this is in military terms? Well, the significance really is twofold. The first is the level of readiness it brings, preparing the country for a state of war and bringing all British armed forces to the highest possible levels of planning and preparation. This necessarily includes the British strategic nuclear deterrent this, of course, has never happened before, so how quickly and effectively we can respond remains to be seen. But clearly, there is a real urgency now due to the severity of the crisis. The second and possibly more serious implication is that it tells us that our intelligence services have assessed the threat as being very dangerous, so they clearly know that something is up. 
and we'll be returning to that conversation in a few moments. We interrupt to bring news that the Ministry of Defence has reported what it refers to as a number of large order detonations in the seas off the coasts of Syria and Turkey. No details or confirmation of these reports attributed to local NATO observers have been received as yet, but it is understood that one of these attacks was targeted against key supply vessels carrying fuel and ammunition to NATO forces. We believe that there is footage of the attack from a military observation vessel and we hope to have that shortly. In further breaking news, the government has taken control of British Airways and all cross-channel ferries. They say it's a temporary step to help move troops to Europe. Thousands are stranded at Heathrow and Gatwick, and the Royal Navy is to guard the North Sea oil rigs. The MOD have described it as a prudent precautionary measure. And in a further dramatic development in the growing international crisis, Russian troops have crossed the border into Estonia and Latvia. International observers have reported a significant incursion involving an estimated 75,000 Russian troops and a number of tank divisions and missile regiments. Heavy fighting has been reported along the border areas, but Russian forces have broken through in several places and are moving quickly towards the capitals of both countries. An estimated 15,000 NATO troops are stationed in the Baltic states, making it unlikely that any significant defence of the territory can be achieved. Russian heavy armour divisions have surrounded the strategically important cities of Narva and Voru in Estonia and Rozenka and Kraslana in Latvia in an attack led by elite Russian special forces. Russian troops and heavy armour divisions based in Belarus and in the Soviet enclave of Kaliningrad have also been massing across the border of Lithuania, with incursions of Russian fighter and surveillance aircraft already being reported in Lithuanian airspace. The national government in Vilnius has declared a state of emergency and has requested NATO support in defending its country against Russian aggression. In Washington, an emergency session of the United Nations Security Council is underway, and the Russian ambassador to the United States is currently meeting with senior officials at the White House in what is being described as a frank and earnest exchange of views about the growing international crisis. In Moscow, Russian President Vladimir Putin has defended the actions of his military forces, stating that Russia has been provoked beyond measure by years of political and military encroachment by Western nations and that the time had come to assert its right to defend legitimate cultural and political interests in former Soviet countries. It is not known whether the US president has had any direct contact with his Russian counterpart or whether the so-called hotline between the White House and the Kremlin, in place since the Cuban Missile Crisis, has been used since the conflict started. The US president, the US Secretary of State and the Secretary of Defense, plus a number of other key political and military leaders, have left Andrews Air Force Base in Air Force One and are likely to remain airborne until the crisis has stabilized. NORAD has declared DEFCON 2, bringing all American strategic nuclear forces to a high state of readiness and sending America's strategic bomber wings to their assigned fail-safe points across the globe. All remaining vessels of the U.S. submarine fleet have sailed from their bases, joining an already substantial contingent of naval vessels in international waters. In the UK, military and civilian authorities are continuing their preparations to respond to the growing crisis. All non-essential and elective surgeries have been cancelled by the NHS and hospitals are being cleared of non-critical patients to make way for potential casualties in the event of a wider conflict. A number of American B-52 long-range bombers and B-2 stealth aircraft have been seen leaving RAF Fairford, a primary forward staging base for United States Air Force strategic assets in the UK. The Prime Minister and senior members of Cabinet are directing emergency operations from an undisclosed location outside of London, along with the head of British Armed Forces and other senior military leaders. In a brief interview with reporters, the Prime Minister expressed his shock and concern about the incident between Russian and NATO forces. Prime Minister, can you give us your reaction to today's events and what this means for Britain's relationship with Russia? It is an absolutely appalling, shocking, horrific incident uh, that has taken place and we've got to get to the bottom of what happened and how this happened. Uh, we have some information but we need to find more information. And Prime Minister, can you comment on rumours that Russian forces have used tactical nuclear weapons in the conflict against NATO forces? 
Well, information is coming in uh, all of the time, uh, and uh, we'll have, but it's not possible to say more at the moment. American B-2 nuclear stealth bombers have been seen leaving Aviano Air Force Base in Italy. It is not clear whether they are equipped with nuclear weapons, but a senior US military spokesperson has stated that a non-conventional military response may be required and that they needed to be prepared for any eventuality. It is not known whether the bombers will be engaging directly in the conflict off the coast of Syria or whether they will be deployed to the Baltic states to defend Latvia and Lithuania against the Russian military invasion. The B-2 bombers are practically invisible to radar and are capable of staying airborne for prolonged periods during a conflict. American AWAC surveillance aircraft along with several airborne refueling aircraft have also left Aviano Air Force Base to support military operations in the region. The Polish government has expressed their concern about the accumulation of Russian forces along its northeastern border with Belarus, fearing that they may push towards Germany and in doing so reclaim many regions within its country that used to be under Soviet control. Poland for many years has permitted NATO early warning and defence missile systems on its territory and these are likely to be targeted by Russia in any significant move of its army towards Western Europe. Large-scale evacuations have already been reported in Warsaw and Krakow, prompting fears that the movement of people away from major cities might interfere with the deployment of troops and military vehicles to key defence positions. All civilian and commercial air traffic in the region has been suspended and emergency civil defence measures have been initiated by the Polish government. The AGES anti-ballistic missile system, in the early stages of its implementation in Poland, has been activated, although it is unclear how effective it would be should Russia launch a large-scale nuclear first strike. And we can now join our correspondent, Sophie Jones, who is stationed with the British naval fleet somewhere in the Mediterranean Sea. We are not allowed to give any details of their exact location at this time, and we believe that they have updated information about the type of weapons used by Russia against NATO forces. Sophie, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you just fine. Sophie, joining us on the call is our military advisor, Sir Norman Fairchild. But first, can you tell us as much as you can about latest developments in the conflict? Well, things have been moving very quickly from what started earlier today as a rumour that Turkish forces had fired on Russian jets to a situation where NATO and Russian forces have been firing directly on each other. As you know, there has been a significant presence of British and US warships and aircraft carriers in the region because of the ongoing conflict in Syria, but no one had anticipated that the situation could change so quickly and there has been a great deal of confusion as NATO forces have tried to respond. We've already seen footage of Russian warships firing precision-guided missiles and we can report significant losses of NATO vessels and Navy personnel as a result. US and British warships have been returning fire and sorties of fighter aircraft are engaging with Russian forces and as you can imagine, casualties are significant. Sophie, we believe that we can now look at footage recorded not long ago which we are keen to share with our military expert. Can you tell us something about this? Yes, we do have footage from a stationary camera on board a NATO observation vessel which was sailing close to a supply convoy carrying supplies of fuel, ammunition and military equipment, which of course is critical to the ability of NATO forces to sustain this battle. We understand that Russian submarines have been using their torpedoes against supply convoys, as well as warships and aircraft carriers, but what is significant here is that in each case a massive explosion has occurred, almost too big to describe. We have thought the torpedo had struck an ammunition storage vessel, but the fact that we have had at least three such explosions reported suggests that this is not the case. If we can roll the tape now, you'll see a distant view of the supply convoy, partially masked by one of the fuel tankers in the foreground, a couple of kilometres or so away from the camera. What happens then is just incredible. It seems to be a huge detonation underwater. The blast itself was at least a mile so wide, and must have wiped out at least 20 or 30 vessels in one go. Let's go straight to our military expert for his view on this incredible footage. Can you tell us what type of weapon you think the Russians are using here? Well, I have to say that this is very disturbing. This is not a conventional torpedo by any means, and there is no doubt in my mind that Russia are using a nuclear-tipped torpedo, which would explain the extraordinary scenes we've just witnessed. I strongly suspect that they used a T-5 nuclear torpedo, which generally has a yield of around 10 to 20 kilotons. 
and certainly would be capable of delivering the type of impact we've seen in this footage. And I have to say that this brings us into a completely different type of game. There is absolutely no way that NATO can compete against this type of weaponry by relying purely on its conventional forces. So the question is how they will choose to a very worrying development. And there can be no doubt now that this is part of an orchestrated and premeditated strike by Russia against the West. The situation is on a knife edge. NATO will have to respond, but we've clearly been caught napping. The West is totally unprepared for this type of scenario, and the willingness of Russia to use battlefield nuclear weapons is likely to force the hand of NATO military leaders to respond in kind. Even then, Russia is far better prepared, so I think we're in serious trouble here. I'm sorry to interrupt. Let's continue the commentary, but we have breaking news of a significant explosion at RAF Filingdales in Yorkshire, the home of Britain's ballistic missile early warning system in what appears to be the first direct attack against UK forces on British soil. We've also had reports of similar attacks on Thule Air Force Base in Greenland and on Clear Air Force Station in Alaska from what appears to be submarine launch ballistic missiles. Sir Norman, this is clearly a strategic move by Russian military commanders. Yes, all of these military bases are part of a network of early warning radar systems designed to detect a nuclear launch against the West and to help to target incoming nuclear warheads. NATO has quite a substantial anti-ballistic missile system, but it relies on accurate targeting. So without these advanced radar capabilities, we'll be more or less shooting blind. It's pretty clear that we're going to get into a real shooting match very soon, so... I think we should get off the air because things could go wrong very quickly. Uh, the security environment in which we meet today is dark. This uh, nuclear uh, saber rattling of uh, Russia is uh, unjustified. It's uh, uh, destabilizing and it's uh, dangerous. And. Uh, uh, this is something which we are addressing and uh, it's also one of the reasons why we now are uh, increasing the readiness and the preparedness of our forces and uh, uh, we are uh, responding uh, by, the, uh, by making sure that the NATO also in the future is uh, uh, an alliance which uh, provides uh, deterrence and uh, protection uh, for all allies against any uh, threat. And we've just had a statement in from NATO Central Command. Western forces have used battlefield nuclear weapons against advancing Russian troops in eastern Poland and have also confirmed the destruction of the Russian city of Kaliningrad, which was a major military center and submarine base. A NATO spokesperson has said that efforts to contain the conflict are ongoing and that the American and Russian presidents are in direct contact at this time. American B-2 strategic bombers have attacked Russian military bases in Belarus and B-52 long-range bombers continue to approach Russian sovereign airspace. There are rumours that major Russian cities are being evacuated and that a national civil defence programme is underway to move citizens to underground shelters and subway systems. In Britain, the Ministry of Defence has said that it continues to monitor the situation very closely and that all efforts are being made to ensure the safety and security of the United Kingdom. The Prime Minister is said to be gravely concerned about the escalating crisis but has asked the public to remain calm and to be confident that everything is being done to resolve the situation peacefully. The Archbishop of Canterbury and other senior religious leaders have asked people to come together in prayer at this time of great peril and to have faith that goodness will prevail over the forces of destruction. And we've just had more breaking news that thermonuclear bombs of undetermined strength have exploded at NATO regional military headquarters in Brussels and at a major US military and radar base in Wiesbaden in Germany, resulting in the reported destruction of the city of Mainz and the outskirts of Frankfurt. <laughs> This is an emergency broadcast from the BBC. Confirmation of a nuclear attack against this country has been received. Please stand by for further information. This is not a test.
This is an emergency broadcast from the BBC. Confirmation of a nuclear attack against this country has been received. Please stand by for further information. This is not a test. This is an emergency broadcast from the BBC. Confirmation of a nuclear attack against this country has been received. The threat level is extreme, meaning that a major attack is imminent. All airports and motorways have been closed for military use. Non-essential telephone lines have been disconnected. Civilians are advised to stay indoors. Please stand by for further information. This is an emergency broadcast from the BBC. Confirmation of a nuclear attack against this country has been received. The following locations have been identified by radar tracking as primary targets. London, Manchester, Birmingham, Leeds, Liverpool, Portsmouth, Glasgow, Belfast, Crewe, Newcastle, Cardiff, Oxford, Sheffield, Plymouth, Edinburgh, Aberdeen, Derby, Bradford, Coventry, Folkestone, Swansea, Northampton, Bristol, Preston, Ipswich, Barrow in Furness, Leicester, Carlisle, Lancaster, Dover, Perth, Fort William, Faslin, Hull, Southampton, Cambridge, and Newport. All major airports, power stations and military bases across the country have also been identified as primary targets. Civilians are advised to seek immediate shelter in the most secure location in your home. Create an inner refuge if possible by stacking furniture, mattresses or any heavy objects to protect you from the effects of blast and fallout. Stay away from windows and external doors. Turn off all gas appliances, and extinguish any open fires or flames. Gather as much drinking water and food as possible, and store them in your inner refuge. Please stand by for further information. This is an emergency broadcast from the BBC. Confirmation of a nuclear attack against this country has been received. When nuclear impact is imminent, the attack warning red signal will be broadcast. The attack warning red signal will be sounded when nuclear impact is expected to occur within 90 seconds. When you hear the attack warning red signal, seek immediate shelter in your inner refuge, or in the most secure location available to you. Do not go out of doors. If you are caught in the open, lie down. Do not stay in any location where you might be exposed to the direct flash from a nuclear detonation, and do not look at the nuclear flash as this can cause permanent blindness or damage to eyesight. Right now you should focus on collecting water, food and other essentials. Store them in your inner refuge. Collect any medical supplies, clothing and bedding you might need. Bring a battery-powered radio if possible, as this may be the only way of getting information after the primary attack. You will need to remain in your inner refuge for at least 14 days, due to the lethal effects of radioactive fallout. After the main nuclear attack is over, it is unlikely that any rescue or firefighting resources will be available. Radioactive fallout and damage to infrastructure and transportation links will make it difficult for your local civil defense authority to reach you within the first week of an attack. Store your food and water carefully, and use fresh produce first, leaving canned or preserved foods for later. Do not leave your shelter to seek out medical assistance, food or drinking water, as radioactivity levels will be extremely dangerous for at least the first 7 to 10 days. If you have any fatalities as a result of the attack, you should wrap the body as tightly as possible in paper, polythene, sheets or blankets, and move the body to a nearby Attack warning red. Attack warning red. Seek immediate shelter. Seek immediate shelter. Attack warning red. Attack warning red.